Hello there YouTube, I am Necro Steve and it's time for the GBA Season 9, Week Number 7. This week's opponent is going to be the Durham Dreadigans, coached by Six Foot Hacks. Yet another amazing opponent that you all probably already know about, but in case you don't, his information will be in the description. I have a brief team builder for you before the battle today, but if you don't want to listen to it, there will be an annotation to jump right into the battle. Of course, these never take that long. So let's get right into it. Now, uh, Leo had access to the following Pokemon. Marshadow, Garchomp, Ferrothorn, Thunderous Incarnate Form, Snorlax, Cresselia, Comfe, Alamomola, Nidoking, Darkrai, and Mega Medicham. His Z users were Garchomp and Thunderous, and this team was incredibly difficult to prep for. Uh, he basically has incredible speed tiers, great bulk, um, support, great coverage and priority. Uh, very, very difficult to prep for. In practice, I kept on getting flinched by Mega Medicham because I don't have a good psychic resist for Mega Medicham that doesn't just get smashed by fighting. So yeah, um, but I ended up going with the following team, which is a very, very physically bulky Xerneas. Thank you very much, MV and Skyrander, for helping me uh, get the Xerneas there. Uh, with max defense and max speed and a sleep talk calm mindset, I knew uh, with Sticky Web Up, I would outspeed his whole team. And um, with max defense, it becomes a decent check for Marsh Shadow and Garchomp. Uh, after that, of course, I had an Assault Vest Mian Shao. I meant to actually bring my Regenerator one, I brought the wrong one to the match. Uh, so I ended up with Reckless Me and Shao, but I meant to bring Regenerator. And that just has High Jump Kick, U-Turn, Stone Edge, and Fake Out just to really um, kind of just hit things hard and kind of pivot in and out. It also is a decent switch into Darkrai. Uh, after that, I had a Focus Sash Alakazam with Taunt, Psychic, Focus Blast, and Counter. My idea there would be to bring it in on something that isn't necessarily threatened out by Alakazam and can live a hit. And then as they fire off a physical attack, I could just counter them. Um, I also had Taunt for the likes of Cresselia and Snorlax, just so they could not set up on me, because they would be annoying. After that, we have another physically defensive fairy with our Slurpuff. Slurpuff has Sticky Web, Flamethrower, Yawn, and Dazzling Gleam. Uh, Sticky Web here is really nice because of Choice Scarf or Choice Bandit Marshadow versus my team. Um, in addition to that, uh, Garchomp, Darkrai, and Metacham all have great speed tiers versus me, and so the ability to slow them down was really, really nice here. Also, Slurpuff can basically live a hit and then hit anything else back, and with Flamethrower, I'm not complete fodder for Ferrothorn to just set up all of its entry hazards on me. So, um, after that, we have our uh, Ayapapa Berry Rotom Moform. I honestly really struggled with what to put in this final slot because um, I knew I was going to bring Dual Dance Lander Asterion, uh with the Flying EMZ, but the Rotom Mo was really difficult for me to figure out just because I was like, I don't know what to put in that slot. I didn't want to bring something that his Pokemon like uh, Snorlax or Cresselia or to a lesser extent the Comfey could just set up on. But I also didn't want something that just allowed something like his Ferrothorn to just set up entry hazard. So I ended up going with Rotom Mo there, just in the slot. I also had a tough time deciding on a lead versus his team. Because he could very easily lead his more offensive Pokemon, such as Mega Metacham, Marshadow, Darkrai, or Garchomp. And if I lead with the wrong thing, he claims a KO. On top of that, even if I lead with the correct thing, if I mispredict what type of set he has, he gets a KO. So I was in a position of, I might have to sacrifice something early just to get information. Um, Cause I didn't want to try bringing in anything on certain Pokemon, especially in practice. Like I'd be like, oh yeah, I can just easily swap in my Slurpuff and then it would get flinched to death before we got a chance to set up Sticky Web. Or I would try to bring in my um, Xerneas and then it would get hit by a coverage move or something like that or a Z coverage move. So it was just a very difficult battle to prep for. 
and he drafted an amazing team. Uh, it's it's just woo, very difficult to play for. But that's okay. Our win conditions here are going to be our Xerneas, of course, and the Landorus. In prep, I was able to set up uh, Rock Polish and Swords Dance and then sweep with Landorus a few times. And then I was also able to sometimes just completely stall his entire team out with Xerneas here. But here's the battle. Thank you for watching the team builder if you did. If you didn't, um, yeah, you'll just find out the sets as we go. He starts off with his Mega Metacham here. And I was really afraid of trying to swap in something. I was hoping he would just go for Fake Out. But he just goes directly for Ice Punch, which I thought was very ballsy. I could have very easily just started with a Choice Scarf Rotom and gone for Will-O-Wisp. But that's not a situation I was in. And now I do get to bring in my Sword Puff because I know that I'm 3-hit coded by Zen Headbutt. So here I actually expected him to swap out. Um, based on the role there, I was actually thinking that he might be adamant. Because Jolly, I generally am going to be 3-hit KO'd by, but that could very easily have been adamant. And then in that case, it's a roll to two-shot me. I just went for Yon there to kind of force him out, where if he stayed in, then one of the huge threats against my team is neutered. And if he swaps out into the very likely Ferrothorn, I knew I could take that on just because I could flamethrower it as he sets up his entry hazard. My defensive investment um, allows me to even take a gyro ball from him, so I wasn't really worried about that either. Uh, and if he did have the berry, I wanted to go ahead and eliminate that so that my Alakazam could finish him off later if needed. So here, I was actually kind of expecting him to swap out. I was very close to clicking Dazzling Gleam or Yawn, and I was like, you know what, let's go ahead and go for Yawn, because even if he stays in, that means Ferrothorn will be something that I can set up on later. He goes directly out into Darkrai, and I was like, yes, okay, this is great. Because Darkrai, because of a, an event that happened, I think, back in 09 or something like that, Darkrai got an event with Sludge Bomb, so I was pretty certain he'd have Sludge Bomb on Darkrai. I go out into my Assault Vest Mian Shao, and unfortunately he gets the poison, and uh, I also find out that he's life orbed. And this is where I find out that I brought the wrong Mian Shao, because I don't get my health back when I switch out. So if I had brought my Regenerator Mian Shao like I planned, the poison would not have mattered, but because of my oversight. Now I have a Mian Shao that basically doesn't have any HP, especially after I U-turn here expecting him to switch. Uh, and I take the Iron Barbs damage there. I really could have just gone straight for High Jump Kick, but it, it really didn't matter too much. I go out to Alakazam here, um, just to put myself in a position of I can taunt him, I can go for Hidden Power Fire, no problem either way. I do just go straight for Hidden Power Fire, expecting him to try to just get damage on my Alakazam, or maybe set up some more entry hazards. Uh, Snorlax comes in and takes negligible damage, and here I could have clicked counter. I thought for sure he would start setting up on me. After seeing Hidden Power Fire, it would be unlikely that I would carry Hidden Power Fire and Focus Blast, and I thought he was going to try to set up. I could have just clicked counter there and done so much damage to the Snorlax, uh, but that's fine. Here I did decide to stay in and go for Psychic, knowing that I wouldn't knock him into his berry range. And I can lower his HP without knocking him into that range, and then I go out to Landorus, hoping for an opportunity to set up. I was worried about the Marshadow in the back, and I really wanted to click Swords Dance first. But if I click Swords Dance first, that means Marshadow comes in and goes for Spectral Teeth, and then he steals it. Unless, of course, he is not Scarfed, and then I'd outspeed him. But I didn't know if you were scarfed or not, and so I just have to stay in here and take the Ice Punch. And I was very, very tempted to just go for a regular Earthquake there, but I didn't want to risk not knocking out the Snorlax. So I ended up going for my Z-Move here, which actually works out pretty well, just because I don't take any extra chip damage from the Ferrothorn's Iron Bar, so that's kind of cool. I am from this range, we are able to KO the Ferrothorn with the Flying EMZ, so that's pretty handy. And that does force in his Marsh Shadow, and I was like, okay, from here, if he's able to KO me from this range, that probably means he's banded. And I'm just gonna go ahead and tell you, he's actually adamant Spooky Plate, but I was like, oh, to KO me from that range with the Marsh Shadow, he has to be banded. But uh, he was adamant Spooky Plate the whole time, and especially because here, he swaps out his Marsh Shadow, because I brought in my Xerneas going, okay, if he swaps out, he's probably banded. And he swaps out, and I was like, okay, I've got this. Because now I just, I'm in a position where I need to get my Xerneas set up. I could have gone straight for Calm Mind there, but I didn't want him to stay in and go for 
Spectral Thief and then steal my boost, making it harder to KO a Marsh Shadow, of course. Um, but I was like, I'm 95% sure he's banded, but if he's not, I just am going to go straight for my <laughs> my offensive move here. Um, here is, I brought in my Mian Shao, and unfortunately, because of me neglecting to bring Regenerator, I just get KO'd from the poison from earlier. And that all was completely pointless. I took extra Stealth Rock damage on Xerneas, and he got his berry back for no reason. So, now is where the end game begins. He doesn't seem to have a way to remove Sticky Web from his side of the field. With Sticky Web active, Xerneas outspeeds his entire team unless he has a Choice Scarf Pokemon in the back. Uh, if he does not have a Choice Scarf Pokemon in the back, then Xerneas is able to win and just has to get past the Snorlax. And so we have a little bit of a back and forth here where he's trying to whittle down my Xerneas and get a paralysis with Body Slam. And I'm just trying to get him into a range where two boosted Moonblasts will KO him because I don't have any special attack investment on Xerneas. It's all into defense and speed here. Now I do reveal Rest, which I was very tempted to wait one more turn before resting. But I was very, very wary of getting fully paralyzed. So as soon as I saw that paralysis happen, I was like, nope, time to click rest. And what we have here is a situation where I'm leaving my fate into the hands of RNG. Because if you don't know how sleep talk works, sleep talk, of course, can only be utilized if you're asleep. Rest lasts for two turns. When you click sleep talk, it will randomly select any of the three remaining moves that you have. And one of those moves can, moves can be rest. So you basically have a, in this ch chance, I had a one out of three chance to get Moonblast. I also had a one out of three chance to get Calm Mind. I do get lucky right there. I'm able to pick up a Calm Mind boost while I'm asleep, which is really, really nice. I am going to uh, be waking up on the next turn, and I'm just going to go straight for Moonblast because I was thinking, okay, I rested around this range last time. He should recycle here because he would think that I would res I would rest, and then he get his health back, and I get my health back. But I went ahead and pressed the more offensive option there, because if he did recycle, I he would immediately be down a berry. I would recover a little bit of health from my leftovers, and then I'd be in a position where I could immediately moonblast again, and he wouldn't have a berry. So I kind of forced him into a position where he had to recycle again, or he's going to lose a Pokemon. So he's at really, really low HP here, and I was like, okay, he's going to assume that I'm just going to Moonblast, but I calped it. If Mega Metacham comes in and it has Bullet Punch, it, ha it will do around 30, 35% assuming Adamant uh, Max Attack. If Garchomp comes in, say Garchomp is Scarf, and it has Poison Jab, it will do around 35 to 40%. So it was imperative that I keep my HP up here. Because even if I outsped his team because of the sticky web, he could have had a Scarfer in the back. He also could have had um, priority on Metachamp. So I really wanted to keep my HP over 60%. That is critical here. Now he goes back onto his Marsh Shadow. Basically on this time, I know I outspeed it. All I need is to get Moonblast right here on the Sleep Talk. And that's basically the game. I click Sleep Talk and 1 in 3 chance I get Rest. Now... This is really, really big because number one, Spectral Thief steals my boost. Uh, so he now has plus two special defense. On top of that, I don't have my special attack boost. In addition to that, since he stole my special attack boost and he's now twice as specially bulky, I'm no longer able to KO him with the Moonblast. Uh, and I think he had some bulk in there as well. Again, remember, at this point, I'm still thinking that he's Bandit because he just keeps on going for Spectral Thief. And so I thought I had time here to get in another rest. I would have rested a turn earlier, but he finally reveals that he is not banded. And he goes for the Shadow Sneak to pick off my Xerneas. And that is highly unfortunate. I go out into Slurpuff just knowing, hey, maybe I can KO his Marsh Shadow. But with the plus two special defense, <laughs> my Slurpuff isn't even to KO it from that range either. And so that means we lose this battle basically down to the sleep talk RNG there, which was totally a position that I put myself in. But uh, that does not stop this from being... I actually had a lot of fun with this battle. In prep, I got steamrolled a lot. And the, um, the ending 
differential here, us losing 0 and 4, does not show his remaining Pokemon, of course, were his Garchomp, his Mega Metacham, the Marsh Shadow, and his um, Darkrai, which was asleep. So things coming in on Sticky Web versus my Max Speed Xerneas, he has to use priority or I win. And my Xerneas had so much physical bulk, I could have taken any priority. So that really came down to just that RNG of Sleep Talk and uh, I rolled those dice and I lost because of it. So thank you very much, Six Foot Hacks, for the battle. Make sure you guys go check him out. Thank you, Goldoa Dragon, for recording for me nice and early. I do appreciate it, sir. And thank you all for watching. I am in the midst of moving this week, so after I get to where I'm going in a new state and get settled, then um, I plan to put a little bit more uh, time into my last few uploads for the season um, but starting a new job where I'm going to be at and all that good stuff that will be my primary focus but I never ever want to join a league or anything that I do and not be able to do things on time and do things as I agree to do them at the start and so that's why um, generally I'm always able to upload on time I always try to battle on time uh, and I appreciate you guys watching my battles on time so let me know how you think this battle went. And next week, we are actually up against uh, HLD Productions, I think, uh, coached by Randy and uh, uh, the Houston team Rockets. I think that's his team name. I don't actually remember. He has a cool logo, though. Uh, yet another new opponent that we have not faced. So something to look forward to. I hope you guys have a great week in the meantime. Thank you for watching, and I will talk to you very very soon. Have a fantastic day.